Stoicism. Stoicism is a school of Hellenistic philosophy that flourished in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. The Stoics believed that the practice of virtue is enough to achieve eudaimonia, a well-lived, flourishing life. The Stoics identified the path to achieve it with a life spent practicing certain virtues in everyday life such as courage or temperance and living in accordance with nature. It was founded in the ancient Agora of Athens by Zeno of Sidium around 300 BC. Alongside Aristotle's ethics, the historic tradition forms one of the major founding approaches to virtue ethics. The Stoics are especially known for teaching that virtue is the only good for human beings and that external things such as health, wealth and pleasure are not good or bad in themselves, idea for a, but we have value as material for virtue to act upon. Many Stoics, such as Seneca and Epictetus, emphasize that because virtue is sufficient for happiness, a says would be emotionally resilient to misfortune. The Stoics also held that certain destructive emotions resulted from errors of judgment, and they believed people should aim to maintain a will called Proheresis, the other is in accordance with nature. Because of this, the Stoics thought the best indication of an individual's philosophy was not what a person said, but how a person behaved. To live a good life, one had to understand the rules of the nature order since they believed everything was rooted in nature. Stoicism flourished throughout the Roman and Greek world until the third century AD, and among its adherents was Emperor Marcus Aurelius. It experienced the decline of the Christianity, became the state religion in the fourth century AD. Since then, it has seen revivals, notably in the Renaissance, Neo Stoicism, and in the contemporary era modern stoicism history the name stoicism derives from the stoa poikili ancient greece or painted porch of colonnade decorated with mythic and historical battle scenes on the north side of the Agora in Athens, where Zeno of Syrium and his followers gathered to discuss the ideas. Near the end of the 4th century BC, unlike the Epicureans, Zeno chose to teach his philosophy in a public place, in a public space. Stoicism was originally known as Zenonism. However, this name was soon dropped, likely because the Stoics did not consider the founders to be perfectly wise and to avoid the risk of the philosophy becoming a cult of personality. Zeno's ideas developed from those of the Cynics, brought to him by credits of Thebes, whose founding father, Antisthenes, had been a disciple of Socrates. Zeno's most influential successor was Chrysiphus, followed Cleantes as leader of the school, and was responsible for molding what is now called Stoicism. Stoicism became the foremost popular philosophy among the educated elite in the Hellenistic world and the Roman Empire to the point where the war 
episodes of Gilbert Murray, nearly all the successors of Alexander, profess themselves as Stoics. Later, Roman Stoics focused on promoting life in harmony within the universe within which we are active participants. The scholars usually divide the story of Stoicism into three phases. The early Stoa from Zeno was founding to the Antipater, the middle Stoa including Panaetius and Posidonius, and the later Stoa, including Masonius Rufus, Seneca, Apictetus and Marcus Aurelius. No complete works survived from the first two phases of Stoicism. Only Roman text from the late Stoa survived. Philosophical systems. Philosophy does not promise to secure one thing for external for men. Otherwise, it would be admitting something that lies beyond its proper subject matter. Whereas the material of the carpenter is wood, that of statuary branch, so the subject matter of the art of living is each person's own life. Put it, Apictetus discourses 1.15.2, comma, Robin Hart revised translation. The Stoics provided a unified account of the world, constructed from ideals of logic, monistic, physics, and naturalist ethics. Of these, they emphasized ethics as the main focus of human knowledge, though the logical theories were of more interest for later philosophers. Stoicism teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means of overcoming destructive emotions. The philosophy holds that becoming a clear and unbiased thinker allows one to understand the universal reason, locus. Stoicism primary aspect involves improving the individual's ethics and moral well-being. Virtue consists in a will that is in agreement with nature. This principle also applies to the realm of interpersonal and relationships. To be free from anger, envy, and jealousy, and to accept even slaves as equal of other men, because all men alike are products of nature. The Stoic ethic espouses a deterministic perspective in regard to those who lack Stoic virtue. Client is one's mind that the wicked man is like dog tied to cart and compelled to go wherever it goes. Stoic of virtue by contrast would amend his will to suit the world and remain in the words of affected is sick and yet happy and burial and yet happy dying and yet happy in exile and yet happy in disgrace, and yet happy. Thus, resulting in a completely autonomous individual will, and at the same time, in the universe studies a recently deterministic single whole. This viewpoint was later described as classical pantheism and was adopted by Dutch philosopher. Eric Spinoza. Logic. Theodorus Cronus, who is one of Gino's teachers, is considered the philosopher who first introduced and developed an approach to logic, now known as propositional logic, which is based on statements of propositions rather than terms differing greatly from Aristotle's term logic. Later, Chrysophis developed a system that became known as Stoic 
logic and included a deductive system, stoic silocistic, which was conceived a rifle to total silocistic see silocism. New interest in stoic logic um, in the 20th century were an important developments in logic were based on propositional logic. Susan Bobzian wrote the many close similarities between Christopher's philosophical logic and that of God of Love Fridge are especially striking. Bobzian also notes that Christopher's wrote over 300 books on logic. Unfortunately, any topic logic today concerns itself with, including speech, act, theory, sentence, analysis, singular and plural expressions, types of predicates, indexicals, existential propositions, sentential connectives, negations, disjunctions, conditionals, logical consequences, valid argument forms, theory of deduction, proportional logic, model logic, tense logic, epistemic logic, logic of suppositions, logic of imperatives, ambiguity, and logical paradoxes. Categories. The Stoics held that all things, though not all things, are material. Besides the existing banks, so they admitted foreign corporeals are some matter time, place, void, and soluble. They were held to be just subsisting of a universal heat body hot into the object. But unlike Aristotle, the extended idea to cover all accidents. Thus, if an object is red, it would be because some part of a universal red body had entered the object. They hail that there were four categories. First is substances, the primary matter, formless substances that things are made of. Second, quality. The way matter is organized to form an individual object in stoic physics, a physical ingredient, pneuma, meaning ear or breath, which informs the matter, somehow disposed to a point. Particular characteristics not present within the object such as size, shape, action, and posture, for it somehow disposed in relation to something, characteristics related to other phenomena, such as the position of an object within time and space relative to other objects. The Stoics outlined that our own actions, thoughts, and reactions are within our control. The opening paragraph of the Encoridian states the categories is some things in, in the world are up to us, while others are not. Up to us are our faculties of judgment, motivation, desire, and aversion, and so it whatever is our own doing. These suggest the space that is up to us are within our power. A simple example of the Stoics categories in use is provided by Jacques Braswick. I am a certain lump of matter and thereby a substance, an existent something, and thus far, that is all. I am a man, and this, and the visual man that I am, and thereby qualified by a common quality, and a peculiar one. I am, sitting, or standing, disposed in a certain way, I am. The father of my children, the fellow citizen of my fellow citizens.
disposed in a certain way in relation to something else. Malosi, the Stoics propounded that knowledge can be attained through the use of reason. Truth can be distinguished from fallacy, even if in practice only an approximation can be made. According to the Stoics, the senses constantly receive senses and pulsations that pass from objects through the senses to the mind with belief and impression in the imagination. Fantasia. An impression arising from the mind was called a phantasma. The mind has the ability to judge. Sin catathesis, sin catathesis, proof or resect, an impression enabling it to distinguish a true representation of reality from one that is false. Some impressions can be sent into immediately by the others can achieve only varying degrees of hesitant approval, which can be labeled belief or opinion doxa. It is only through reason that we can clear comprehension and conviction. Catalepsis, searching and true knowledge, apistem, achievable by the Stoic says can be attained only by verifying the conviction with the expertise of one's peer and the collective judgment of humankind. Physics According to the Stoics, the universe is a material resonating substance logos which is divided into two classes, the active and the passive. The passive substance is matter which lies like is a substance ready for any use. It should to remain unemployed if no one sets it in motion. The active substance is an intelligent either primordial fire which acts on the passive matter. The universe itself is God and the universal outpouring of its soul. It is this same world's guiding principle, present in mind and reason, together with the common nature of things and the totality that embraces all existence. And the far ordained mind and necessity of the future, then fire and the principle of failure, then those elements whose nature state is one of flux and transition, such as water, earth, and air, then the sun, the moon, the stars, and the universal existence in which all things are contained. This is a quote by Chrysiphus in Cicero, De Natura, Deorum, I.3.9. Our faith then is subject to the law of fate, for the universe acts according to its own nature, and the nature of the passive matter it governs. The souls of humans and animals are emanations from this primordial fire, and are likewise subject to fate constantly regard the universe as one living being, having one substance and one soul, and observe how all things have references to one perception, the perception of this one living being, and how all things act with one movement, and how all things are the cooperating causes of all things that exist observed to the continuous spinning of the thread and the structure of the wave. This is a quote by Marcus Aurelius, comma, Meditations, comma, IV. Individual souls are perishable by nature and 
can be transmitted and diffused as a mean of theory in nature by being received into the seminal reason, logos is formaticus of the universe. Since right reason is the foundation of both humanity and the universe, stoic theologians of fatalistic and naturalistic pantheism. God is never fully transcendent, but always a man in denied and identified with nature. Abrahaming religions personalize God is world creating entity. Stoicism equates God with the totality of the universe, according to Stoic cosmology, which is very similar to the Hindu conception of existence. There is no absolute start to time, as it is considered infinite and cyclic. Similarly, space and the universe have neither start nor end. Rather, they are cyclic. The current universe is a phase in the present cycle, preceded by an infinite number of universes, doomed to be destroyed. Ek, pyrosis, conflagration, and recreated again, and to be followed by another infinite number of universes. Stoicism considers all existence as cyclic, the cosmos as eternally self creating and self destroying. See also eternal return. Stoicism does not posit the beginning or end to the universe. According to the Stoics, the Logos was the active reason or anima mundi, pervading and animating the entire universe. It was conceived as material and is usually identified with nature or God. The Stoics also referred to the seminal reason, Logos, Spomaticus, or the law of generation in the universe, which was the principle of the active reason working in inanimate matter. Human to each possess a portion of the divine Logos, which is the primordial fire and reason that controls and sustains the universe. Ethics. The foundation of Stoic ethics is the good lies in the state of the soul itself and wisdom and self-control. One must therefore strive to be free of the patience. For the Stoics, reason meant using logic and understanding the processes of nature. The logos of our universal reason inherent in all things. The Greek word pathos was a wide ranging term indicating an infliction one suffers. The Stoics used the word to discuss many common emotions such as anger, fear, and excessive joy. Passion is a disturbing and misleading force in the mind which occurs because of a failure to reason correctly. For the Stoic Chrysiphus, the passions are evaluative judgments. A person experiencing such an emotion has incorrectly valued an indifferent thing, a fault of judgment. Some false notion of good or evil lies at the root of each passion. Incorrect judgment is to a present good gift rise to the light, while lust is a wrong estimate about the future. Unreal imaginings of evil could distress about the present or fear for the future. The ideal stoic would instead measure things at their real value and see that the passion are not natural. To be free of the passion is to have a happiness which is self-contained. There would be nothing to fear, for unreason is the only evil. 
no cause for anger for others cannot harm you the story corrects the peasants on the four headings distress place of fear and lost one report of the story definition of these peasants appeared in the treatise of on patience by pseudo andronicus translation long and sadly page 411 modified distress up Distress is an irrational contraction or a phrase opinion that something bad is present at which people think it is right to be depressed. Fear phobos. Fear is an irrational aversion or avoidance of an unexpected danger. Lost epitomia, lost is an irrational desire or pursuit of an expected good, but in reality, bad. Delight, delight, he don't. Delight is an irrational swelling or a fresh opinion that something good is present, at which people think it right to be elated. Two of these patients, distress and delight, refers to emotions currently present, and two of these, fear and lust, refers to emotional directed at the future. These two are just two states directed at the prospects of good and evil, but subdivided as to whether they are present or future. Numerous subdivisions of the same class were brought under the head of the separate patients. Table, present, good, delight, future, good, lost, future, evil, fear, present, evil, distress, distress. And by rivalry, jealousy, compassion, anxiety, mourning, sadness, troubling, grief, lamenting, depression, vexation, despondency, fear, sluggishness, shame, fright, timidity, consternation, pusillanimity, bewilderment, and faint heartedness. Lust, anger, rage, hatred, enmity, wrath, greed, and longing, delight, malice, rapture, and ostentation. The wise person so far is someone who is free from the patience of Patiaya. Instead, the sage experiences good feelings, eupatia, which are clear heated. These emotional impulses are not excessive, but nor are they diminished emotions. Instead, they are the correct rational emotions. The Stoics listed the good feelings under the heading of joy, chara, wish, bolishes and caution you love you. thus if something is present which is a genuine good then the wise person experiences an uplift in the soul joy tara the stoics also subdivided the good feelings joy enjoyment cheerfulness good spirits wish Good intent, goodwill, welcoming, cherishing, love, moral same, reference, suicide. The Stoics accepted that suicide was permissible for the wise person in circumstances that might prevent them from living a virtuous life, such as if they fell victim to severe pain or disease. But otherwise, suicide would usually be seen as a rejection of one's social duty. 
for example, Plutarch reports that accepting life on the tyranny would have compromised Cato's self-consistency. As historic and impeded his freedom to make the honorable moral choices, love, and the sexuality. All historics differed significantly from late stoics in the views of sexuality, romantic love, and sexual relationship. Zeno first advocated for a republic ruled by love and not by law where marriage would be abolished, wives would be held in common, and eroticism would be practiced with both boys and girls with educative purposes to develop virtue in the loved ones. However, he did not condemn marriage as per se, considering it equally a natural occurrence. He regarded same-sex relationships positively and maintained that wise men should have carnal knowledge, knowledge and no more of a favorite than of a non-favorite, nor of a female than of a male. So, you no know, favorite love of a desire, clarifying that the ultimate goal of sexuality should be virtue and friendship. Among later stoics affected is mentioned homosexual and heterosexual sex as equivalent in this field and condemned only the kind of desire that lead to act against judgment. However, contemporaneous positions generally advance towards equating sexuality with passion and all the dear way is still not hostile to sexual relationships by themselves. They nonetheless believe those should be limited in order to retain self-control. Mazzoni has espoused the only natural kind of sex was that meant for procreation, defending a company in a form of marriage between men and women and consider relationships solely undergone for pleasure or affection is unnatural. Legacy Neoplatonism Plotinus criticized both Aristotle's categories and those of the Stoics. His student Porphyry, however, defended Aristotle's sin. He justified this by arguing that the be interpreted strictly as expressions rather than as metaphysical realities. The approach can be justified, at least in part, by Aristotle's own words in the categories. Peter's acceptance of Porphyrus' interpretation led to their being accepted by scholastic philosophy. Christianity, the father of the church, regarded the Stoicism as a pagan philosophy. Nonetheless, early Christian writers employed some of the central philosophical concepts of Stoicism. Examples include the term logos, virtue, spirit, and conscience, but the perils go well beyond the sharing and borrowing of terminology. Both Stoicism and Christianity assert an inner freedom in the face of the external world, a belief in human kinship with nature or God, a sense of the innate depravity or persistent appeal of humankind and the fidelity, temporary nature of worldly possessions and detachments. Both encourage ascesis with respect to the patient's and inferior emotions such as lust and envy, so that the higher possibilities of one's humanity can be awakened and developed. Stoic influence can also be seen in the works of Ambrose of Milan, Marcus, Minosius, Felix, and Tertullian. Modern, uh, modern uses as a person who represses feelings or endures patiently 
the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's entry in Stoicism notes the sense of the English adjective historical is not utterly misleading with regard to its philosophical origins. The revival of Stoicism in the 20th century can be traced to the publication of Problems in Stoicism by A. A. Long in 1971 and also as part of the late 20th century surge of interest in virtue ethics. Contemporary Stoicism draws from the late 20th and early 21st century spike and publications of scholarly works on ancient Stoicism. Beyond that, the current Stoicist movement traces it through to the works of Albert Ellis, who developed rational emotive behavior therapy, as well as Aaron T. Beck, who is regarded by many as the father of the early versions of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, psychology and psychotherapy. A stoic philosopher was the original philosophical inspiration for modern cognitive psychotherapy, particularly as meditated by Albert Ellis' rational emotive behavior therapy, third form REBT, the major precursor of CBT. The original cognitive therapy treatment manual for depression by Aaron T. Beck et al. states, the philosophical origin of cognitive therapy can be traced back to stoic philosophers. A well-known quotation from, from Enchiridion of Epictetus was thought the most points during the initial session of traditional REBT by Alice and its followers. It's not the events that upset us, but our judgment about the events. This subsequently common element in the socialization phase of many other approaches to CBT. The question of stoicism's influence on modern psychotherapy, particularly RABD and CBT, was described in detail in the philosophy of cognitive behavioral therapy by Donald Robertson. Several early 20th century psychotherapy were influenced by stoicism. Most notably, the Rational Persuasion School, founded by the Swiss neurologist and psychotherapist Paul Du Bois, who drew heavily on stoicism in his clinical work and encouraged his clients to study passages from Seneca the Younger's Human Assignments. Similarities of modern stoicism and to web CBD have been suggested as well. And individual reports of its potency in treating depression have been published. There has also been interest in applying the tenets of ancient stoicism to the human origin story. Environmental education, vegetarianism and the modern challenges of sustainable development, material consumption, and consumerism. CMS Mark Swibney has described the practices of spiritual exercises as influencing those of reflective practice. Many parallels between stoic spiritual exercises and modern cognitive behavioral therapy have been identified. According to philosopher Pierre Haddad, philosophy for a Stoic is not just a set of beliefs or ethical claims. It is a way of life involving constant practice and training, or as cases, an active process of constant practice and self-reminder. Apictetus in his discourses distinguished between three types of act, judgment, desire and inclination, which added identifies these three acts with logic, physics and ethics respectively. Right, that in the meditations, each maxim develops either one of these very characteristics topoi, that is, acts are two of them or three of them. C also. Amor Fetty.
it was a Wikipedia article on Stoicism read to you by Sunday Scoffley, it's on 5th of November 2023.